Praise the name of the Lord. My topic this morning is God rewards faithfulness. Praise the name of the Lord. God rewards faithfulness. Praise the name of the Lord. And I will be reading 8 to 17, but I will read verse 16. And he said about this season, according to, sorry, 2 Kings 4, verses 8 to 17, but I will be reading verse 16 now, and then we will start from verse 8 and climax at verse 17. Praise the name of the Lord. Reading. And he said about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When I research the word reward, Reward means something given in recognition of one's service, effort, or achievement. Something given to show one's appreciation for an action. Those of you that are writing, something given in recognition of one's service, effort, or achievement. Something given to show one's appreciation for an action. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in the natural, sometimes we open our Sunday suns and we see certain business places have rewards that they reward those that work in the company with. Sometimes we see people rewarded for 10 years. We see people rewarded for 30 years. We see people rewarded for 15 years. All types of different years some people are rewarded for. Some people give plaques, some people give something like a glass trophy, but there are various different things that are given even in rewarding those, the employees of the workplace from the employer. Praise the name of the Lord. In this word that we have here this morning, it speaks about Elisha and the woman from Shunem, which was called a Shunammite. We wasn't given her name. We was told that she was from Shunem, so therefore she was called a Shunammite. Like how we are from Barbados, but we are called Barbadians. From Canada, are called Canadians. Praise the name of the Lord. And the word of God tells us from verse eight, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman. So this is the first thing we're establishing about this woman. She was a great woman. She was great in wealth. She was a wealthy woman. Praise the name of the Lord. She was wealthy. And she constrained him to eat bread, or she urged him, or she beckoned him. Come and have bread with me. I recognize, I believe that this woman saw Elisha passing, I believe this could be the first time that she saw him passing. But I believe that she saw him, you know, moving up and down. She, she probably was concerned about if he had eaten anything. So she asked him or she urged him, come in and have bread with me. Praise the name of the Lord. And she said unto her husband, behold now I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Now, this woman wasn't just a wealthy woman. This woman had vision. She perceived. She was keen eye. She recognized that this wasn't an ordinary man. This was a man sent by God. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe too that when this woman invited him at her for bread, I believe the way he conducted himself spoke well of him. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes in life, even as we see with this woman that she didn't have a name, but she was just called a Shunammite. You know, sometimes for us, if we got a title, you cannot dare. Don't call that person by the title. They will want to know where 
you may can sport. Some people won't even answer you. Some people won't even answer you. That's how they view their title so big that you must call them by their title. But this woman here in the word of God, and the word of God tell us that God inspired holy men, right? To write this word. God had God knew this woman's name. But it was important to show it doesn't matter your background. God is able to use you for his glory. The title wasn't important. You know, they got some people today, if they get married, and the finger that the ring is on can't touch the rest of the body, you dare not call them by, if they near Lydia, the first name. You know, they will say, who you talking to? I'm Mrs. So-and-so. And if you don't call Mrs. So-and-so, they will not answer you. But here is this woman, wealthy. Wealthy and just called a Shunammite woman. Praise the name of the Lord. And the word of God tells us that she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. So you see, this woman was taking note. Somewhere, somehow, every time Elisha passed, this woman was, I was said by her window, to see Elisha passing to and fro. She said he's passing continually. And it, it, it probably looked to her like the same way he came from, the same way he was going back. So she said, look, he probably has something in our area to do. So she spoke to her husband pertaining to the prophet. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, a stool, and a candlestick. No. This woman was trustworthy. Alison, why you say that? Normal men, how dare you know? Those men in those days used to work in the field called the high cattle. You still work in the field, but the women you to stay home and like do the cooking and you know doing the world to make the clothes and other things that they did. But this woman was trustworthy. You know, this woman spoke to her husband about making a little place for the man of God. Some men were so weird. You expect a man to be in my house. And I out working while taking the chances. And some some men you can't even get away for drop. It may sound strange, but it's true. Some men think funny even if you give their wife a lift. And here is this woman saying, let us build some place for this man. Some men will say, wait, you, look, you got your eyes on here or something uh, that you want us to build a little chamber for this man. But this woman was trustworthy. She was trustworthy and she has said, there are some women that ain't got no say. The men got all the say. The women ain't to say anything. The men got, got all they say, and you got to say, yes, sir. Jump and say, yes, sir. But this woman has said, she said, honey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build a little chamber for him on the wall. And the wall then, like, the walls that we've got now, you know. It was like with the time of Jericho, how the chariots could have traveled on the wall. The walls was broad, so, you know, they could accommodate they could accommodate some place, build it on them. These then a little flimsy walls. These were structures, well, well structured out. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, she didn't just build a room. She didn't just want to build a room. She didn't just want to do, you know, some people do something for you, but they're going to do it any, any old thing. Any old thing could do for you. She wanted to make sure that the man of God was comfortable. Amen. She said, look, he need a bed. She ain't let me sleep on the floor. He need a bed. So he getting a bed to sleep on. We giving him a chair and a table. Now if he is a prophet and he going to and fro. You know as God give him visions and dreams he might want to write. So he got a table to press on. He got a chair to sit down on. And like you know sometimes you just sit down and you might want to study or whatever. She decide we going to put a little stool or we going to give him like a little candlestick. Candlestick is like how we would say a lamp today. So he had light also in the room. He had a little dark corner. He had light also in the room. You getting it? You getting it? Sometimes you got to be able to read the tone 
that the word was pain with. You got to be able to hear the tone coming out in which the word was written. So there was also a candlestick. And hear what this lady is saying. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. No, she's telling her husband, this, this gentleman is coming again, or the hospitality that we show. Yeah. He's going to come again. But instead of just coming and eating bread, we will got some place prepared for him that when he doesn't eat, he's able to lie down yeah. and be comfortable. Right? Right. And it fell on a day that he came to the, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. No. The mere fact that the words tells us that he was able to turn into the chamber, what does that mean, church? The husband gave her permission to build the chamber. I believe the husband said, honey, if that is what you're allowed to do, I don't have a problem. You go ahead and do what you have to do. Oh, that some men will tell the wives, honey, if that is what is your intention, I agree with you. I back you up 100%. Go ahead and do what it is you have to do. And not only, don't, 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 don't let me stand at here. Do like if I only for the women. Men, I pray that when you come up with a good idea, that the women will back you 100% too. I don't want to seem partial. I don't want to seem partial. Pray that the women will back you 100%. And, and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. Now, we see that this woman took time out to nurture, to be caring to the man of God, to take care of the man of God's needs. We recognize she was a giving person because if she wasn't giving, she would not think about doing these things because her husband in the field, I believe he couldn't see what she was saying because he was in the back. She was more in the front, so she could have seen better what was happening, right? So she took care of this gentleman's needs. She nurtured him. She do whatever that she had to do. And the word of God tells us, he told Gehazi, Call this Shunammite for me. And when he had called her, meaning the Shunammite woman, Gehazi, she stood before him and he said, Aunt, she said, and he said unto him, Say no unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. Now here is Elisha returning the gratitude. To this woman. Now this woman did whatever she did. And she wasn't looking for anything in return. She just did it out of the kindness of her heart. But here is Elisha telling Gehazi. Say to this woman. Now I believe the woman the short there. But Gehazi was like the servant to Elisha. So he's saying Gehazi this is what I want you to tell. To say to the woman or to tell the Shunammite woman. But I love, I love Gehazi. I love Gehazi. I love Gehazi. Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Now here is Elisha turning the tables to this woman. He's asking the woman, What can we do for you for all of this kindness that you showed unto us? Praise the name of the Lord. Would it still be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the horse? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. You know what that means? When she said, I dwell among my own people. I have my own servants. I am contented with what I have. That's what she's saying. I am contented with what I have. Praise the name of the Lord. And he said, what then is to be done for her? No, I believe the woman said that and she turned and went on away. Because here is Elisha. I believe somewhere in his spirit that some, something was telling him or, or, or somewhere somehow God was saying to him, something needs to be done for this woman. Praise the name of the Lord. And he knew that there was more that could be done for her. And he said, what then is to be done for here? Here's Gehazi. Now Gehazi coming at the people's house. Getting bread. 
But he didn't only tell Kenny, right? He done observing what else is happening in the house. No, Elisha, being the man of God, I believe he the more focus on the prophetic and, you know, certain things. But Gehazi, you know, you know, it's good to got people around you that can see. You know, it's good to got people around you that observe, that can pick up things when you can't pick up. And he said to his servant, Gehazi said to him, Verily, she hath no child. <laughs> Listen. And her husband is old. Now, two things that Gehazi noticed. He didn't walk in with the prophet for nothing, you know. He, he was in the realm too. He recognized what was happening. He said, look, this woman did so much good for us. She says she don't want anything. She contented with all that she have. She servants, whatever, the, the cattle, whatever. But she husband all. And they don't have no child. Now you see that alone, Elisha could have taken advantage when he was when his little room was built. Cause the husband is an old man. So he could have used it to his advantage. But I believe. The mere fact how he conducted himself, him at Gehazi, it said, I believe this woman was beautiful. I believe she was a beautiful woman. So it said to, said to her, uh-uh, this man is different. If he was a certain type of man, he would have seen that my husband, oh, well, I'm probably. But she recognized that this was a different man that you're dealing with here altogether. Amen. And he said, call her. He told Gehazi, Call back this woman again. I believe the woman said, well, I went already. Me need call her back again. Anyhow, we're going. Call her. Call her again. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. No. She ain't come in the room. You know, some people say, they're my house. I free to come in any place in here. You know, just walk through. But this woman was respectful. She stood at the door. She stood at the door to hear what Elisha was going to say to her. Praise the name of the Lord. And Elisha said, about this season now, Elisha never bothered to ask the woman, you need a child? <laughs> My servant tell me you ain't got no child. <laughs> and you husband old. You know, sometimes you just got to use wisdom. Just use wisdom. We see here that Elisha ain't waste no time. Elisha spoke a prophetic word Amen. over this woman's life for the kindness you show. I can show you what God is going to do on your behalf. Amen. And Elisha said to this woman about this time, say if it was August, by next August, that's what I mean by this time. Yeah. Mean to say, by next August, you. By this, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord. No, my Lord. That ain't true, my Lord. I don't know who you're talking about, my Lord. Thou man of God. You hear what she call him? Thou man of God. Do not lie unto thy handmaid. What does this tell you? That this woman and her husband tried in earlier times to conceive, but nothing happened. So she was saying, like, don't give me false hope, Elisha. You mean after all the kindness I do for you and you servant, you come now to give me false hope? Well, I already turned the nursery into a study. I already bought the baby clothes and get away to the Salvation Army, though, Elisha. The booties and things that I had that I didn't love so there I already get somebody down the street to put on them baby feet. Lord. All the books that I had on birth and on about babies, I already get away. The books that was about baby names, I gave them away. Don't Elisha, you telling me, don't lie to me, man of God. Lord. My husband old, I old, we can't get no children. But I come this morning to bring a word straight from the throne of God that God is saying with God nothing shall be impossible God see your faithfulness 
praise the name of the Lord. And God is saying, because of how you took care of my work, because of how you choose not to do to me or to, to be in the place that I will have you to be, praise the name of the Lord about this time. Yeah, mama, shut I come to bring a word to someone. I don't know if you're online. I don't know if you're in this house today. But I want to say to you that God is about to reward you in your womb for your faithfulness. God is saying about this time, next year, you will embrace your own child. Yeah, mama, shut you know sometimes uh, even with this Shunammite woman she once had a dream she once had a dream and her dream was to embrace her own child but when the time looked as if it had run out when her womb looked like if no more eggs could be there when her, her husband was to the age like if he can't fertilize anymore you know they gave up hope they gave up hope to shut the door on hope she said or probably her husband said this can't happen for us praise the name of the Lord but I'm here to tell somebody God is going to cause your dream to live again God is going to cause you to hope against hope this morning in the name of Jesus 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 yeah, yeah, mama shut up. Yeah, Baba shut up. Yeah, mama shut up. Philippians 4 6 tells us be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Praise the name of the Lord. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season, yeah, Baba Shatai, there's a due season that is coming to someone. There's a due season that is on the horizon for someone. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. If you got the faith to believe that God is able to do it for you, He said, you will reap. If you faint not, praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, Baba Shata. Yeah, Mama Shata. Yeah, Baba You know, we also read, I'm not going to read those scriptures, but we read about Abraham. And when God had told Abraham, that is in Genesis 21, verses 1 to 7. And God told Abraham that he was going to give him a child. And you know, it was like, God promised me this child, but the time has gone. But the word of God tells us that in the fullness of time, God, Abraham was able to embrace that son that God has promised. Praise the name of the Lord. We heard it before from our pastor Sobers. Hannah, 
also was able to bear a son. You know, China was a person that she said she was barren. Praise the name of the Lord. But you know, as she went into the temple because of Penina, you know, Penina used to like fret her and like try to, because she had frozen and Hannah had none, she would try to make sport at Hannah. And you know, the time came when it was going up to the temple of God. She said to her husband, you know, the seed that we are about to sow, I want to sow more. I don't just want to sow the normal, but I want to sow more. Praise the name of the Lord. Because Hannah knew what was in her spirit. Hannah knew what she wanted God to do on her behalf. Praise the name of the Lord. And the word tells us, you know, as Hannah was in the temple, you know, Hannah was, was so, I believe, deeply troubled that she couldn't even speak the words hard. But as she muttered, the word of God said, the priest, Eli, the priest, thought that she was drunk, praise the name of the Lord. And Hannah replied, I'm not drunk, my Lord, but I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, she laid her complaint to the priest, praise the name of the Lord. And that's found in 1 Samuel 1, verse 9 to 20. And the word of God tells us that in due season, Hannah was able to embrace Samuel. And Hannah made God a promise. God, if you give me a man child, I'm going to give it back to you. And you know, Hannah kept her promise unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We see also in, we're going to turn there for this last one as I wrap up. Elizabeth, when she had to bear a son. Luke chapter 1, we're going to go to Luke chapter 1. Praise the name of the Lord. And we're going to read first from verse 3, from verse 5. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everyone have it, praise the name of the Lord. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. So we see that Zacharias' wife, Elizabeth, had a good background. She was of the daughters of Aaron. Praise the name of the Lord. And we know that Aaron, there was the priestly tribe. There was from the priestly tribe. Praise the name of the Lord. And her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous. You heard that? Yes. These people were righteous before Almighty God. Praise the name of the Lord. These people were living upright. Yes. This was doing the things that God wanted done. Praise the name of the Lord. Before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You heard how they walk? There was blameless in their walk, praise the name of the Lord. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and their birth were now well stricken in years. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office, meaning her husband Zachariah, the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of the incense. So he was the person that was supposed to offer up the situations to God on behalf of the people. So while he was dealing with the incense, the people had to be outside praying. You get that? Praise the name of the Lord. 11, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zachariah, for thy prayer is heard. Now we hear this. Zachariah was praying all along for a child. Praise the name of the Lord. And the angel appeared unto him, I believe, after many years. And so fear not, Zachariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, 
and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now here is some prerequisites about this child. The angel was saying this child ain't a party in wine, not strong drinks, because he has come to earth for a purpose. Amen? Amen. We are going to go down to verse 20. And behold, back up, back up, back up. Verse 18. And Zachariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. Now imagine you the priest. You the head. You offering up prayers on behalf of other people, but you got unbelief. So you see, there's always something. There's always something. He's the priest, and he's saying, look, I all, I believe that correct tell yourself, we the praying about this church so long, nothing ain't happened for us. And now you come to tell me, and we all age, we can't run, but behind the child now, I got a walking stick. How, when the child run away, how is to get this child? My, 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 my vision now ain't so good like before. How is to manage with this child? Right now I'm looking just now to come out to the temple. And you telling me no but a little young child that we gotta look after? My hand's shaking. How am I supposed to hold this child? Lord, Lord, Lord. And Zachariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife well stricken in years. You see how he looking at the situation? He looking at it in the natural. He looking at it and he's not a man that offering up prayers on behalf of other people. He got a double mind right now when it comes to an angel from God that come to tell him what God himself said. No, this man sitting down in the place acting for God, dealing with the needs of the people, you know. And God himself sent a word to Zacharias, his servant. And Zacharias is saying, look, I old. My wife stricken in years, and you come to tell me about a child. Here the angel now, because the angel wasn't taking this lightly. And the angel asked me, said unto him, you know who I am? You know, you know who you're really talking to? I am Gabriel. Huh? That's, that he ain't just... You know, they got enough Gabriels out there, you know. We I mean them. <laughs> this is the angel Gabriel that's saying, you know who I am, Zachariah? I ain't just an angel, though. I just am the one that stands in the very presence of God. I'm the one that brings messages from God to people. And you going to make me out a liar, or I going to show you what you going to do now. You going to know if I'm true or if I lie. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. You ain't accepting what the Lord said to you, all right? I can remove you from your priestly duties. Well, if you're dumb, you can't do priestly duties. You got to respond to God on behalf of the people. You ain't, you ain't deserve to sit down here at this time where you don't tell, you don't tell God, you ain't don't tell me. You don't tell God that sent me. So you gonna be dumb from now on. You're going to be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. What these things? Until the day that the child born. So Zachary, you got nine months now with your mouth shut. Nine months you don't got a job. Nine months now you won't have a job, Zachary. For being, for being disobedient and doubtful, nine months now you won't close. Until the day that, that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. You see, God? If God means for something to happen to miss your doubt, it gonna happen, you know? It gonna happen. A mess that he doubted the purpose of God had to be executed. And God said it can still be fulfilled in its season. Yes. So even if you may be watching online and you may be saying, look, 
I don't get where all the baby things, the nursery is now a study. God is still saying, if I said it, I gonna perform it. So you could as well go down town Monday and start back bearing fresh clothes. Cause the baby coming. Get the bassinet, get the cradle, get the playpen, get the stroller, cause the baby coming. And we're gonna to go to verse 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age. Now, this is the angel talking to Mary. Because the angel appeared to Mary, but we are not focusing on Mary. We're dealing with Elizabeth, right? And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her. Now, you see how far Elizabeth gets? Elizabeth had six months, only three months to go. Three more months to go and the promise, as the word of God said, in next season, it is coming. Praise the name of the Lord. And listen to what the angels say, who was past tense? Who was called barren? So it means she ain't barren anymore, was past tense. I want to declare to someone that God sent this word to. Past thanks was barren, not barren anymore. God is about to do the impossible. God is about to do the impossible. Praise the name of the Lord. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. No, Mary excited to hear, I is a virgin and I pregnant. Knowing not a man. But thank God I got company. My cousin pregnant too. Rich is old. So I going there. That's the right place for me to be at this time. <laughs> That's the right place for me to be at this time. Two people that it didn't look like it could have happened for. Look now it's happening for us. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> and Mary on the roads in those days. I went into the hill country with face. You know sometimes we got things to do. We take with time. She ain't there. She turned the word of God so we fear. She hurried. She hustled to get to her cousin's house. Into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias. And saluted Elizabeth. And listened to what? You know God. You know God is confirmed he word. You know we serve a God that's confirmed he word. And entered into the house of Zacharias. And saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation, when Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, Lord. hollering, I believe, I believe before she get to the house, she the hollering, you know. Before she got, she the so excited, before she get to the house, she the hollering for Elizabeth. Heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leap in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. You hear that? She didn't just fall with a child. Amen. But the Holy Spirit filled her also. Amen. You remember that the angel when he appeared to Zacharias, he spoke of John's life and what kind of child this would be. This child was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, every time we say oh and pray that you receive the Holy Spirit. But here in the word, it tells you that this child was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. We declaring that the babies that are about to come forth from the womb, they're going to come forth filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? We declaring that now from in the womb. This generation that God is about to raise up, we declare it's going to be a generation that filled from the womb with purpose. 
that coming forth with purpose, that coming forth with authority, that coming forth with the anointing. Praise the name of the Lord. The army that God is raising up, we declare they're coming forth with purpose and filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God said that the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a low voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. I want you to know that if you look at the word well, you will see that even before Jesus came forth, John was supposed to be the forerunner of Jesus. But here is Mary, and here is Elizabeth. And you see that Elizabeth is doing a servant work, even on Jesus' behalf, even on Mary's behalf. Hear what she's saying. You know, John came as the forerunner. Well, here is Elizabeth, like the forerunner now for Mary. Listen to what she's saying. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a low voice and said, Blessed art thou among women who you think she was talking to me. She was talking to Mary. I wasn't present. She was talking to Mary. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. She pronounced a blessing, another blessing on Jesus. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And when says this to me, that the mother of my Lord know, Elizabeth knew that Jesus would be Lord of all. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hear what she is saying, that the mother of my Lord shall come to me. Who's me? Huh? That the one that can die and bring salvation, the mother of that person should be in my presence or in my house or come to me. Praise the name of the Lord. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. You hear that? Because she believed. Because she believed. There what the word of God say. And blessed is she that believed. Because she believed there's going to be what? A performance of what God said he was going to do. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Even if man don't believe it. God said because she believed. It shall happen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. It shall happen. Praise the name of the Lord. And we're going to reverse. 40. And here is 57, verse 57. No, Elizabeth, no, listen to this. No, Elizabeth, full time came that she should be delivered. You hear that? Yeah. A woman that was old, a woman that was barren, yeah. a woman that she husband so was well stricken in years. The word of God, so look, the time had come now for she to be delivered. And she brought forth. What did the angel say that she going to bring forth? A girl. The prophetic word was true. She brought forth a son. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to say this morning that when God says something, it is so. And no one can change what God said, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. No one can change it because the word of God is true. The angel came and brought the word, praise the name of the Lord. And the word then dropped to the ground. The word, the word manifested Amen. and brought forth as the Lord has sent the angel to say, praise the name of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. 1 Peter 2, 15 says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you shall put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. And Leviticus 26 Verses 3 and 4. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you the rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. So, this morning, 
I don't know who this word is for. But I just want to say that whoever, you may be watching online, you may be in the house this morning, I want to say to you that this doesn't only mean for those that God is going to give a child to, but there are some of you, there are some of you that, you know, you had dreams, you had aspirations, you had desires. And you put them on the back burner. But God is saying this morning to hope again. Amen. Whatever is your dream, whatever is your aspiration, God is saying hope again. God is saying allow the dream to live again. Praise the name of the Lord. For he's about to do the impossible. What you thought couldn't happen for you, God is saying is about to happen for you. Praise the name of the Lord. You thought that it would never come true. You thought that it was not about to happen. Maybe there was something you desired God to do for you. That you have probably given up on. Does it seem hopeless? Never to be. Listen to the promise. Believe in the faithfulness of God. And let hope rise again. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.